I'm constantly baiting, I'm constantly tracking and I'm trying to keep my animals able to graze but of an evening they're locked in secure paddocks. They actually come, this is something I have never seen before, but they turn up late in the afternoon and wait at the gate to be let in. From the mountains to the sea and across the outback, wild feral dogs are killing livestock and native Australian animals. Here in subalpine southeast Australia, some graziers report $170,000 losses from wild dogs killing their lambs this season alone. Bonang Valley grazier and large landholder Robert Belcher chairs Snowy River Interstate Land Care, an environment and conservation group made up of rural landholders. He says the wild dogs are destroying border country farmers' livelihoods and that graziers are prisoners on their farms as they shepherd sheep in an effort to keep their stock alive. Robert Belcher says even wild dog trappers are fearful of the large hybrid feral dog. He made the comment to a very good friend of mine who lives near him that uh, it was a bit of a relief to reach retirement age because out in the bush on your own, and I have this feeling too and many of us do, um, there's an eerie feeling, especially when you're setting a trap or you're tracking uh, a dog, that they're watching you. And his comment was that they're actually now stalking you. And, uh, you know, there could be two or three or four or more, all watching and moving in closer for the kill. Um, it's not good. Uh, and it is a behaviour pattern that has, again, never existed in the past. This is different to the, the Indian dog, the, the dingo, that came with the Aborigines to Australia, is it? A different way of operating? It uh, couldn't be more different. The original dingo, uh, alpine dingo, has always been a dog that's been particularly shy of human beings. Uh, they can kill. They can kill livestock. But they tend to be uh, uh, more of a loner and uh, they don't breed like... Uh, the more common dogs who've completely intercrossed with these now. Um, and, you know, they're, they're not a, a dog that is aggressive towards human beings. So we're dealing with a completely different customer here. Tell me about your day at the moment and what you actually do to keep ahead of the dogs, if, if indeed you do. Well, my problem started uh, in 2003 when... There were big fires and the government uh, bulldozed or covered in soil uh, probably about seven kilometres of back fence against the National Park. Your fence? Yes. Mm. Uh, the arrogant assumption was that I'm insured, so not a problem. Well, aren't you? Yes, but my insurance only covers half the fence. They own the other half. And I'm trying to make a living as a farmer not as a full-time fencer, repairing the damage they've done. Uh, this escapes them. So I find now that my uh, farming activities are basically nil. I'm literally a full-time protector of my livestock and a hunter of the predator. So at night you're shooting, are you? I'm shooting 24-7, all day, all night. I'm constantly baiting, I'm constantly tracking and I'm trying to keep my animals uh, able to graze, but uh, of an evening they're locked in secure paddocks. They actually come, this is something I have never seen before, but they turn up late in the afternoon and wait at the gate to be let in. What, like trained, like dairy cattle? Absolutely. I've got two uh, mobs now, merinos and crossbreds, at either end of the property, um, I'm uh, head heading down 4.30 just before dark, I open the gate, in they go, I shut the gate, I go up and do the other mob. The, I don't need dogs to muster or what have you. They want to be locked up. I actually witnessed that. You've told me about this, which is extraordinary, but the day became a little grey while we were walking around looking at, at your property, and over the hill came a huge mob of sheep. The older ones were a little wet, so they were dark, and then there were the, a few lambs with them, the shorn white. What were we actually seeing there? Were well, you seeing the merino ewes turn up with uh, what's left of last year's lamb drop, which is, I think, at the moment 19? We're Out of about 500 ewes. The rest have basically, basically gone via the wild dog problem. 
and they're, they're doing exactly what you would see normally later in the day. As soon as the light of the day starts to go, they want to come back, and of course the paddock they're in is the paddock around the house. Do you get kills this close to the house? Uh, yes, I've uh, woken up in the morning and found 20 torn to pieces in the paddock. A lot of people don't realise that uh, when you're sound asleep, if there's two or three dogs in your paddock, they can do an enormous amount of damage in a very short period of time. And they're, they're not in to eat, they're in to kill. They enjoy killing. This is uh, what sets them apart from so many other predators. They're not hunting to eat, they're hunting to kill for fun.